Hi everyone, this is Andy from Mosasole, just uh, showing kind of quickly the latest implementation of Dino Foliage. Uh, so we have the harvest function finally working. I currently have it set to do funky stuff, just like that. And we're going to fix that real quick so that I can show how that works. So we go into the Philanderon, we open up the blueprint, bring up the blueprint to your side so you can see what's going on. And we have Philanderon, we have the interactor. Within the interactor, you have those options. So we're going to, to just set this back to nothing. And we're going to leave, make sure that leave empty is on so that it's okay to leave the item empty. And when you go and pick it up, it will go away and just go away. And if you go out and go back in, it will be gone. So it won't regenerate, which is how we want it. Um, for some reason there it is the collision on here if you show collision you can see that the level actually has some bad collision over here which is what is keeping my feet off the floor uh, so that's just the level show collision it's back to off okay so then you have the flower thing and you pick up the flower and you can see that the flower is replaced with a different mesh and the different mesh matches the original one so you don't really see anything happening that's weird and the flower's been harvested and you interacted with it that's that's how that works so this is this level works with uh, baked lighting and uh, because i have this open the performance is a little on the low side so there close it up and you can get a better result of how this is performing and you know i have even one more window open so close that as well and we get close to 120 uh, FPS uh, quick note the sunflower uh, mesh is not exactly a good mesh to work on it's more of a sample um, I would probably never have the flower petals be individual uh, flower petals like they are in a final item uh, that I use for actual in-world uh, final games because of the performance cost uh, of rendering it um, so keep that in mind uh, let's take a look at the dino foliage content map the new one so uh, it's been worked on we've added a sunflower patch um, and i've made it work with uh, twin blast and we're going to cover the collision channels uh, that you need for this so this is you know the new map everything here works you have the button interaction click E, the ball spawns, so the, uh, the ball spawns and it interacts with the foliage as you can see. So let's cover the collision channels, uh, project settings, brings this up, click on collision, you have the channels that we set up before and the presets like we set up before. Uh, take care of making sure that your replace area is set to uh, overlap the stuff there and Make sure that the dynamic foliage is set to block the physics body and make sure that replaceable foliage is only interacting with replaceable foliage. Uh, with that done, if you go into the test objects and bring up the blueprint for the ball, you can go into the sphere. You can see also see that there is, uh, in fact, you should probably do this. There is no need to have anything in this blueprint. It's all handled by the replacer. Um, but here you can see that the collision is set to custom uh, I have set this to be a physics body so that it responds and the important part is that uh, to make sure that uh, the replaceable foliage and replaceable area both overlap. If this is set to none or hit you will start having issues with the uh, performance because it won't remove the instances as it moves out of them so make sure that you have that on your custom items that interact with foliage. Um, what else? So that covers the collisions. Uh, let's take a look at the button interface and interfaces. Okay, so we're going to cover the four basic things that come with the plugin now. So we have two actors that you add to foliage items as child actors. One of them is the old one that we already looked at. The only things that are changed is the uh, the way that the um, the way that the variables are are positioned. So I'm going to open up the flower and just show that real quick. 
these are the values that you now modify. Everything else got shoved inside either BP access or private. Those values you do not want to change manually on a per child instance unless you go and pick through the code and you absolutely know what you're doing. Uh, the valid overlap classes might be something slightly new, I do not recall, um, but those should be set and you should probably reset them to be whatever you want to overlap and uh, make the foliage react to or stop reacting to. The sphere radius and everything else is the same as before. The disable overlap is like before, it works the same. Then for the flower, we also have the two arrows. The two arrows, which need, to, if you implement your own IK, they need to be named the same if you copy the way stuff works. One is right, one is left. Uh, they're placed where the hand, uh, the, the little center here is placed where the hand left and hand right are supposed to go. And then you have the interaction component, which we looked at already. So going back to the Dino Foliage folder, the next part is the interaction. So you have a foliage interaction, uh, um, sorry, interface, and uh, character interaction interface. Obviously one is for the foliage, one is for the character. Um, they, these are implemented, so the foliage doesn't actually implement, need to implement the interface. It is implemented by the child actor. Uh, the child actor will take care of everything. If you implement the interface on the item, like I did for the button, uh, and yes, it does still need the interactor, but if you go into class settings here, you can see that it has the interaction here and the child actor as well. If an interface is implemented, then whatever code, you need your own code to implement the interface. So this is whatever the button does whenever you interact with it, which in short is it makes the little glass piece over here rotate so that the ball drops. Um, okay, so that's the interfaces. Um, let's look at the character side of that by bringing up the mannequin, I guess, because it's faster. It's right here. So again, class settings, make sure that you're implementing the character interaction interface into whatever character you want to go to. And then you can just copy and play, uh, copy and paste this green block of code, which is literally just setting values, variables. Um, after you have the uh, component, uh, rather uh, the interface implemented, when you paste, this will be a valid event and not a custom event with all the needed pins. Um, so one, after you paste that, those values will all be gray. You will right click up above here on set and you will have an option to create, in fact, I can probably just go and grab something off of here, uh, like that, and show you what happens when you paste. So I'm going to paste that in there. You can see that it's gray. If I click on set, create the variable. So that's what you want to do for everything that you've pasted. And then this last one, this one particularly, will be gray. You need to add the character interaction component. So you're going to go back to the Dino Foliage folder, grab the character interaction component and drag it to there. So once that's done, you compile and it will compile without errors. The interaction thing will bring up the interaction. This is the component code. Uh, within the component code for uh, Twin Blast, you're going to need to modify that rotate function and I will probably make a version or the next update will probably include a version that automatically switches. For right now, you're probably going to want to use the control rotation because Twin Blast uses the control rotation rather than the actor rotation to be able to rotate the character. What that does is it automatically orients the character so that if I'm here, I'm going to automatically turn and actually face the item. Kind of does uh, some leg works for you and it helps with aligning the animation. Uh, the other thing we need to cover real quick is the blueprint for the blueprint changes. So bring it up from Twin Blast here. Characters, heroes, Twin Blast, animation blueprint. Okay. And so long story short, the montages, you need to retarget. You should probably know how to do that. You just go into my Dino Foliage Mannequin Animations folder, right click here, retarget animation, duplicate the asset, disable that, find uh, Twin Blast, and 
if the pose if twin blast is in a t pose it means you need to go and modify the pose you sh should probably know how to do that after you retarget that you'll be uh, in the main content folder and you have the retargeted montage the montage itself comes with all the curves and values that you need um, and it moves the gun like you can see so to undo that I am manually overriding the position of the gun to match the bone of the hand you can copy this node just the same if you're using any other paragon character and then you just paste in the code for the IK, which already has the curve values and everything set to work. So you just need to copy and paste those, create the values. Don't forget to copy the same stuff uh, into the animation blueprint to get the effectors. Um, you're going to paste it in after the stop direction node, just like that, and create the variables that are not going to be created. For the character variable, you're going to need to get a little more creative I guess there is one up here but uh, it, it doesn't really do much uh, so I ended up just copying it over here uh, the important thing is that twin blast already has a character value in him so you're going to delete that uh, variable from down here and you're going to uh, right click here and promote to variable name it character and then you can reconnect and find the left hand offset for it uh, you won't be able to paste this probably because the character type is different so this value this value is coming from a different type of blueprint and it might give you issues so you're probably going to have to pin this down and then find it within the variables options down here uh, or just search and it will pop up uh, so that covers the that covers that that covers that uh, within the character we spoke about the implementation of this and that should be about it let's take a look real quick at the dynaforge folder yeah um, to make sure you want to make sure that double click that open up the footage manager right go into the sphere and make sure that you have that set to replace area I don't know if I mentioned that before when I was talking about collision but uh, if you're doing your own collision channels that's actually important um, I believe that's it uh, another thing I want to cover before that's all there is to it really uh, is let's let's try so it won't interact but it will let me show you the um, it will let me show you the knife uh, asset that comes with this plugin now so let's go and do the where let's put in okay so this one will bring us the mannequin back and you can see that the mannequin now has the little dangling knife and uh, you can also see that this the interaction works but the montage being set to uh, twin blast uh, which does not share the skeleton will cause it to fail like this uh, it's not really a fail per se but still it's problematic uh, because the uh, skeleton assets aren't shared so uh, let's take a look at the blueprint real quick and explain the dangling knife uh, viewport okay so we have a scabbard which is attached to a holster socket and then uh, the, this scabbard is set to collide the collision preset you can see it here um, it's set as a physics body and it's colliding with the not with the pawn but it's colliding with other physics body so then I have a uh, capsule component uh, that mimics the thigh and you can see the object type is physics body and it collides with physics body so that causes the knife to basically dangle then the knife itself is actually attached within a socket inside the um, is attached within a scabbard socket which is inside the scabbard mesh so the mesh itself here has just one bone but uh, or two bones rather one is that is set to kinematic uh, we can actually look at that real quick so this is the scabbard mesh that's a uh, constraint you can see that one of them is set to kinematic that's where you attach the other one is set to uh, simulate uh, with a collision surface and you can also 
take a look at the skeleton we see the sockets so we have a, a hook socket and a uh, scabbard socket the hook socket I don't think is actually hook used in the end uh, because this is just being pivot uh, attached the other way around but I was planning on having additional things uh, hanging from the scabbard so well that that pretty much covers the last thing I wanted to cover um, the hand attachment and everything else like the knife being picked out of the scabbard uh, that's all done within the animations with notifies uh, because that's possibly the best way to go about it um, or the easiest way to configure so if you bring up the actual montages you have at the very bottom you will have the notifies the attached weapon the attached item when you are done picking and stuff should replace and a detached weapon um, all of those are handled in the animation blueprint and uh, you can see the code for it and move whatever you need or create your own versions of this there's also some superfluous code over here I suppose uh, this was some implementation of a rotation of the knife when it comes out of the holster uh, I need to finish and figure out a better way to do that um, so I will probably be updating that eventually uh, that covers everything pretty much Come back here yep all right um, maybe the last thing I don't know if I showed it or not is the foliage here for the for the three I think we looked at it earlier but I haven't painted in this scene so I can always do that just put it in there click it and then in single instance mode let's uh, pop one like right over there gigantic three pop another one in there all right now if I play uh, the mannequin might not be set to replace this yeah so that's uh, that's true uh, and if you remember how to do if you do not remember how to do it you go into the mannequin uh, sorry not here within dino foliage you go into the mannequin folder third person character you will go into the foliage replace and you need to make sure that like we copy and pasted before that you have the last entry I'm not gonna redo it it's superfluous but uh, that's how it, that's how it gets done all right and that's it thank you for watching